Hello, everyone. We're with God of Gods. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. That's uh, that's an <laughs> understatement, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, okay, no. let's start in a way we just used to. So, hello, everyone. It's Sigi okay. Speak with you, and it's the great guests we have here. And Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Please, please, yes, pronounce his name right, because otherwise he will kill you or us. And yeah, the last one is more possible. And Alex K and Alex uh, Alice K and Alex Mill here with you today. And yeah, let's start. Just say let's some. Start. And the first or the first the question is on the interview. Please, Alice, ask one one beginning question. Yes, it's the standard question we ask our guests usually. So please tell us how did you come to your CG? So how did you start to draw? And what was your maybe first drawing? And how did you decide to become a CG artist? Okay. Um, well, first of all, uh, thanks for having me. And uh, hello everyone who, who's joining us live. And then I guess everyone who's going to watch it uh, afterwards. Thanks for you know tun tuning in and and being part of this. I really appreciate it. And thanks for Alex and Alice for an awesome invite. I guess it's going to be fun next uh, next around, uh, around of next uh, two hours or so. Uh, to answer your question real quickly, I mean, I can answer it really quick or I can make a long story. That, that That's up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the long story? The, the short story long? <laughs> All right, so... Um, I've started uh, back in 2003. This is where I officially had my first freelance work. That was uh, the, the very end of 2003 um, and beginning of 2004 is when I started to actually have more and more offers to, to work freelance and generally uh, create art. But before that, I never considered myself to, to even think about working in in entertainment industry, not even just entertainment industry, but as an artist in general. Um, it all started uh, actually back in the beginning, I, be I believe it was beginning of 2003, when I saw a uh, TV commercial. It was on the, on the national TV. Uh, it was right uh, before um, the Academy Awards were, it was, they announced the, 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 nom the nominees for the Academy Awards. And one of the nominees was uh, Tomek Baginski. Uh, Tomek Baginski is one of the guys who, who was uh, there at the very beginning of uh, Platage uh, Image. It's the VFX company and commercial uh, commercial company in Warsaw Pond. Um, and what they did is they, they, they decided to create a short film uh, called uh, Cathedral. Uh, the short film uh, they, they've done was freaking amazing. Uh, it was shown on the national TV and also it was nominated to Academy Award for, I believe, the best uh, animated short. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't win. Uh, there was other submission that, that won. But when I saw it on, on the TV, my first question was, how the fuck? <laughs> uh, who, who, who and why and, and, and what? And I, I don't understand. This is computer graphics and apparently it's done by people. So I was very curious. I, I wasn't sure exactly what it, what it was, so I had to figure it out. I used to draw as a, you know, just, just a regular drawing as a kid. I used to do that uh, for a long time. Uh, I used to get, get in troubles for actually drawing really, um, f you know, violent things on uh, on artistic classes, such as Santa Claus dismembering his elves and all that kind of weird stuff that, you know, would pretty much get me in trouble. Um, you know, generally it was my hobby. I, I just, I, I was just doing it because I liked drawing in general. Um, so I, I just would just pretty much draw everywhere I could. But I never, never thought about it as as something that would be related to my work at all. I actually went to uh, went with the regular path that everyone is convinced that should should be done. So get to a good high school, uh, have amazing grades, so that will allow you to get uh, a great uh, college or university, 
and then study something that is technical or you know what is going to be like if you want to go to medical school school to become a doctor or a law school to become a lawyer for that you actually have to have to be like really good in terms of your grades um, but if you're not, then you can become some kind of technician, electrician or something that's a sort of a stable job uh, career. And uh, that's what everyone is being told, or at least was during th those times when I was growing up. So my parents would be in this, under the same impression. And basically the idea was apply to the probably the, the most impossible universities out there that will just you know crush your soul because it's so hard and difficult just to have a mediocre job for you know low income or uh you know the, the lowest wage possible right so that was that was my goal i was supposed to be an electrician and because i didn't have any money uh to you know do anything outside just learning to be electrician i decided to start working and and the first work that i could do possibly without having any experience in terms of universities or anything like that was you know being a janitor so that's what i was doing um, oh God. <laughs> um and and that was pretty much my life prior to 2003 when i saw that that uh you know tv spot when i saw this um um this this short from Tom McBaginski and and shortly after I think I think there was um, some kind of competition uh, made uh, for for you know animators and and CG animators and then I saw there's w w lots more of that going on there's there are actually art communities out there that work in 3D or you know do digital paintings and and I was I became really curious so I didn't have a computer I didn't have internet or anything like that so my only choice was make money as janitor and then go to internet cafes and figure out what the hell is going on in the real world uh, in which I'm not you know spending uh, time commuting to university uh, 6 a.m. every morning for an hour uh, and learning something that will possibly get possibly not necessarily give me a low income job so that was my reality um, and then I figured out quickly that there are art communities out there. Um, there was a first community I've joined was uh, uh, Max, uh, Max3D.pl, which is a Polish uh, forum for uh, g digital artists. Uh, I've met quite a lot of people and quite a lot of friends out there that I know uh, from, from back those of those days till now. Um, and also the second, I think the second biggest forum that I've stumbled upon was um, Sijin. Uh, so it was uh, Sijin forums, and one intriguing thing uh, that, that that was really that, that that was really something really interesting for me was on Sijin forums there was a the famous um, speed painting thread in which uh, one and only uh, Spooge Demon, a aka uh, Craig Mullins, the the god of concept art, the god of illustration yeah. of CG art You're in general, <laughs> was posting there every day uh, and doing sketches every day. And when I saw what's going on in that thread, I was like, no, no way! I I, I have to I have to join. I have to start doing this kind of work. Um, so when I saw the the, the commercial and the, the nominee for Oscars for the Cathedral, I knew I wanted to do something with CG art. When I saw Sijin, I knew I want to paint and I want to just continue the drawing path. So um, so my game plan was this, get a computer and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and get internet and then figure it out. Uh, so I got my computer. I think uh, there was a wholesale of a company that went bankrupt uh, in the area and they were just selling the old like office computers. So I got one from there. It was like an old IBM. It was it was it was good enough to open Photoshop and do like one or two thousand pixel files. Uh, it was still sort of considered to be a somewhat okay. It wasn't like the fast computer or anything, but uh, but it was something to start with. And the dial-up uh, connection was the first uh, that I had, which is you know connecting to to a phone and waiting for a minute for it to connect and then using 56k 56k fast traffic 
of the internet you know like you i, I guess everyone who who's old enough to to know that what dial up is yeah. will fucking yes, understand what? <laughs> yes, I just wanted to say that I think that newbie artists that listening to us at the moment, they won't believe that, oh my God, this prehistoric <laughs> age, just no internet yeah. at home. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> How old are they? <laughs> I just like want, want to tell one thing. Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. With, you're, you're meet with Craig Mullins very, very soon. It's for our sub subscribers. Oh <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, I I I got familiar with his work really soon. I mean, he was uh, actually on. Uh, by the time I joined uh, Sejin, uh, he was actually uh, you know that was his I think last year when he was posting there. I, after that, he became like extremely busy busy with uh, work and I think uh, I believe he moved to Hawaii or something like that I don't I don't exactly remember um, but you know he disappeared basically but a lot of artists that I saw on Sejin are actually some of them I, I've met over like after years and um, and it's funny I met I've met with um, with David Levy uh, I believe two or three years ago for the first time in, in person and I was like dude do you remember Siegen times and he was like dude Siegen times <laughs> so like every every digital artist that I know like from from those times is like really emotionally attached to that forums and I believe that's one of the reasons because it was just amazing to see everyone posting there was I believe thousands of thousands of pages of of posts uh for for like it per thread and i think that the one i've i've joined was a uh, speed painting four or five because there was like four other threads that reached the limit of the forums you know i think it was like five thousand or twenty thousand posts or whatever whatever the hell and mind you every post had to be with an image so our artists would be posting only with an image any post that would be not with an image would be deleted so you can only imagine the sheer amount of art that was in that uh, thread. Actually, when you go to Sijin forums, I believe they're still up. Um, if you dig really deep, you will see some some really old old um, concepts out there, and it's just like <laughs> uh, uh, m most of them are not uh, there anymore because of, obviously the hosting changes and you know the links die over time because mm -hmm. people just don't take care of them. Mm -hmm. But there are some artists that kind of kept those links up and going, and you know. Between let's say twenty pages, pages you will find few few artworks that are from those times. Like damn, that 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 brings me back, man. That brings me really back. So, um, but yeah. Anyway, so I got my computer and I've got I you know I started painting and and my only tool was mouse. And everyone knows how is how is uh, how painting with mouse works. So I was like, no, fuck that shit. I'm not gonna paint. I'm gonna do 3D <laughs> art, you know. So I, I jumped onto, um, cause, cause right. like opening 3ds Max, you know, um, and mm -hmm. and playing with 3ds Max, it's just like, oh, I can click here, I can drag and create a box and whatever. So I figured, you know what? If Baginski <laughs> created an animation like this, I can do it in a week. So, <laughs> so I started modeling a character for my animation and. You know, because I didn't knew better, I was doing it all with splines, which is probably the worst idea ever, like NURBS and splines back in 2003, and having a hand model that had like half a million polygons. I'm like, um, I'm not sure if I'm doing it right, but if I start skinning it, it's probably, it's just like, just started skinning, like the idea of skinning would crush the computer completely. I, I believe there was smoke coming out of it too. It was like, what the hell are you doing? Um, so like, no, no, I have to. I'm yeah. sorry, guys from chat room, just talk about your voice. There, are, talk. There, your yeah. voice is very sexy and god. <laughs> yeah. Really. Just, I'm, I'm trying. If you are married, I'm really you know, trying. Girls just going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're asked about you married or not. <laughs> god damn it! All right. I'll 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 try to sex it up a, a little bit too. Let's do it with uh, the Russian accent. God, do it. <laughs> so ba basically, I tried to. Um, <laughs> um, anyways, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> so basically. Ask the question, but okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, back to the subject uh, before we derail it too far. Um, <laughs> okay. 
basically so i was just like how am i supposed to pay? like because i saw people painting and i'm so how what how it's done and then i I believe one of one of the one of my friends told me hey it's actually done on tablet i'm like tablet what are you talking about what what is that you know magical thing that you're talking about and i started researching obviously you know still 56k dial up um and i found out okay there are tablets and there are wacom tablets that were so expensive i believe it was like the, the cheapest version was 400 dollars. i'm like four hundred dollars is something i'm gonna i'm gonna make in a year when i was working as a janitor so maybe i should probably forget about that so there were uh very cheap alternatives i, I believe the one that was out there was pentagram which was like um a tablet with a pen that had batteries inside so the pen would be really heavy because it had like two uh double a batteries inside and it w- the batteries would dry dry up after i don't know uh, a couple of hours so y- you could use the pen for a couple of hours and then it would die you would have to exchange batteries um i believe pressure sensitivity was 64 maybe 120 something but it was like really low uh, pressure sensitivity and the uh, precision was not even there at all so but that was something right something to start with so I've worked my ass off as a janitor I got my first tablet after a month um, and I started drawing and I basically outside of university which would pretty much take me from you know waking up at uh, you know I believe I was waking up 5 30 uh, getting breakfast on the way to the train station it would, would take me about half an hour to get to the train station and then yeah there we go we're back awesome so yeah sorry for that i normally uh stream 60 fps but i guess um there's something going on there that is just i, I saw it myself as actually you know it was kind of stopping and going and stopping and going should be much better now so that's yeah. fine uh, so you were yeah, talking about the Wacken tablet, and you had to work for two months for this and stuff. And uh, your first work in Germany. Uh, yeah, so I was working freelance. I was working from home and still going to university, uh, and and still doing that all that jazz, you know. <laughs> uh, so in terms of the amount of time I would have to spend being up and running and not sleeping, nothing changed. The only thing that changed, I, I actually started getting some money, you know. And I could start like saving and, and buying better hardware because I knew I have to invest in hardware. I knew I had to invest in the internet, so I got better internet. That was a few things that I got right off the bat. And I believe shortly after, so that was uh, the end of 2003 where I was getting those jobs. Uh, and beginning of 2004, I started getting more offers. Um, and eventually, again, bear in mind, it was like $20. $30 per illustration or $50 per illustration. So that's something that normally today, if you would ask an artist, hey, I'm going to pay you 50 bucks for an illustration, that's a laughable offer. That's something that, you know, people would be just like, I don't know, man. <laughs> but I didn't know, I didn't knew better. So, and eventually um, I got an offer from the company that, uh wanted wanted me to do an illustration i did a like a illustration for they were doing trailer for uh painkiller uh one of the cinematics for painkiller uh uh game or i I believe it was either a painkiller game or a um the expansion pack the battle out of hell and that illustration ended up uh at uh, people can fly and i believe it was um Adrian uh, Hmielasz, who was a uh, CEO of People Can Fly, saw the illustration and like, who is that guy? And my, f- I, I had a friend that I met uh, at uh, Max uh, Max 3D PL forums, and uh, he knew me, and he knew I was uh, I, I was doing that illustration because we talked a lot during that time, and and that's pretty much uh, a short recommendation. I know him. I can give you his contact. That's what pretty much got me my first uh, video games uh, job. So late 2004, I was offered to move to uh, Warsaw from my hometown in, in the north of uh, Poland, Gdynia, uh, and work in the Battle Out of Hell. And 
that's pretty much how everything sort of went from there because uh, I worked for People Can Fly for a couple of months. Uh, then I started f to search for uh, where I can go from there because I, you know, it was it was nice to work for a video game company like People Can Fly. It was a much smaller company back then than it is now, uh, especially after it was purchased by um, uh, Epic Games. Uh, but for me, the natural progression was like, I, sh I want to go somewhere else. I want to do something more than that. And the next company that uh, wanted to talk with me was, um, was Crytek. And, you know, it, it, the history kind of goes from there. Uh, after Crytek, um, I spent, I believe, five years at Crytek. Uh, then it was uh, Naughty Dog uh, and then, you know, freelance in films and all that. So... That's pretty much how I got into the industry. I guess that's the longer, longer story. Uh, a shorter story would be, I worked my <laughs> ass off for last 15 years to get to the point where I am working an average of 15, 16 hours a day. Oh my God, just, that, that's really cool. Just, that's wow. amazing, yeah. Just, I'm right on your website, I'm looking for the clients you worked with and just, I really like this list. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and just uh, for those who are not, uh, I don't know, who didn't see your website or stuff, I'll just say that clients like Disney, DreamWorks, Legendary Pictures, Warner Brothers, Universal, Marvel, uh, just, just as you said, Naughty Dog, CG Project, like Crytek, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. And well, maybe you can tell us something, some funny, interesting stories about your clients. So, because I'm really a fan of Disney and DreamWorks, and LK cartoon and animation movies. Mm -hmm. So maybe some stories about your work for these companies. How was that? I did, um, I'm not sure if we can ask you who was your like favorite ones and who are not favorite ones, but you can just say us about like your favorite clients, some funny stories about them, maybe some stories from beginning. Um, right, right. Some stories like, I think you got it. <laughs> yeah, so, well, my f favorite of all time, I, I'm not going to be ashamed to say that, was Naughty Dog, uh, even though I left them. Da-da-da-da. <laughs> da um, <laughs> da 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 Yeah, da -da -da. I mean... Basically, uh, the reason I really liked Naughty Dog is not because uh, how significantly, just the fact that I joined that company and how much I've learned working with Bruce Straley and, and Neil uh, Druckmann and, you know, and, and, and seeing how the company is run by uh, Evan and Kristoff. And, and generally, the whole team of, of, of one of the best uh, video games developers, you know, just being in that environment of constant push for excellence, uh, that was a huge change. Uh, also, the company, compared to any other company I worked for, especially in video games, uh, Naughty Dog is a very flat structured. So when I was working at Naughty Dog, it was pretty much, even though I maybe wasn't a director or anything like that, I would still have a lot of say and and that was a great thing because if I could bring up an argument that was really good it would be heard it would be heard and people would act on it you know mm -hmm. so that was one of the changes whereas in, in majority of uh, corporate structures you you have your position and you should not go above and beyond you know so that's kind of like a big dif that was a big difference for me uh, and also I've met probably one of my best friends in uh, in uh, at Naughty Dog, you know, the people that joined Naughty Dog after me and people that left Naughty Dog before me are, I consider st uh, them still as one of my best friends. I still talk uh, oh. a lot with them and, and whatnot. And, and it's because of the, um, I don't know how to call it. It's the, it, not only like-minded people that mm -hmm. were really, really pushing towards an excellence and great results. And, you know, the idea of, you know, sitting with, with people that when they see you do something, they want to do something better. And because they want to, they, they try harder than you, you try, they mm -hmm. create better results. And then you're like, oh, God damn it. Now I have to do something better. So it was like a constant push for, for something, something better than just, just what, what, what it is right now. So that was a great, great thing. Um, 
but also just a lot of fun stuff you know um a lot of silly silly fun stuff i mean uh the office that we had so the concept team at naughty dog so that would be uh eitan zana uh shadi safari who eventually left about six seven months after i joined uh to start the one pixel brush uh but but afterwards was uh, uh eitan and then uh um, Aaron Lemonic would join soon after Eitan. Uh, there was uh, Hyung, uh, who was working there already for a while. Um, and and then I believe it was 2011 or 12 where uh, Nick Jindra and John Sweeney joined the company. And I also managed to get my friend Marek Ocon to work for Naughty Dog. So the time when, when every every single one of us was there, like Marek, me, uh, John, Nick, uh, and everyone else was just like probably the best uh, time. We we're having a blast, you know? <laughs> Actually, you know what? You, you know what? Marek joined before John and and, and, um, and Nick. That's, that, was, that was the case. Because I've, I've left Naughty Dog uh, and went back to Poland for a year to mm -hmm. you know deal with personal stuff and work f uh, freelance for films there was a lot of a lot of like reasons to go but then came back a year after and i was still i, I believe marek was already gone back to poland but nick and john were there and when i was there with nick john Aitan and and aaron like the whole crew is just like f f really amazing not only amazing artists but just funny as fuck people you know like the funniest people to work <laughs> with because yeah. it was just a lot of silly stuff man uh yeah. you know our, our, our pod the the concept area would be dressed into uh yeah. it, we would have a printout of nicholas cage face in from every possible movie angle whether it was or a caricature or drawing whatever was related to nicholas cage would be printed out and pretty much dressed uh, the whole the whole cubic area like the whole pod so mm -hmm. you would have you, would, you wouldn't have walls you would have a wall of uh nicholas cage uh, faces um i also alex uh neonakis she's a ui designer who joined uh later we consider her as a as a team member because she was uh funny <laughs> uh, but generally uh speaking that whole crew was amazing you know and it was just the fact that i could go to the office and work with them uh was the major drive for me to go to the office and work with them you know not only just working on projects like last of us and and then later uncharted 4 yeah. but working with those people so by the way, one of my colleagues are so dreaming about working now they dug, <laughs> you know. Oh. I think a lot of people are dreaming uh, about such kind of work. Okay, next question is mine and asking from Kate. Could you share with us your daily drone routine? How you organize your day to stay productive and energetic? How is your day is working? Tell us, please. Um so there's one cue I've taken because uh, there's a, a lot of a lot of things that are changing when you decide to stop working for a studio, and you choose a route of being a um, uh, you know a, a Ronin, if you if you will, just working from your home and and maybe commuting to studio when you when you're on like a very specific job is time management. It's, it's totally different because one thing that happens when you work inside of uh at your home is the fact that uh you have access to internet you have access to facebook you have access to talking to talking with friends you can also work without your underwear if you want because nobody's looking and pretty much there's a lot of perks of the idea that you can be at home and be a master of your own time and everything like that the problem also is that if you're not disciplined enough you'll waste shit ton of time like a lot you'll be just wasting and wasting time so th it's it's a serious issue if you don't know how to manage yourself and i you know i had days where i would be extremely productive but i would also have days where my productivity levels would be really low because i would be like ah, oh, let me check this uh what people are writing on uh you know on facebook or let me check this let me check that and two hours later it's like what the fuck happened <laughs> i've lost like 
two hours and I felt like two minutes and now I'm behind, you know. And there's also our uh, uncertainty of the fact that you never know when the client's gonna, gonna contact you. Uh, if at all, you know, so you always have to be on top of the job. And the majority of friends that I worked with uh, were in the situation where, or majority of friends that are freelancers do the same mistake, a lot of them actually do, is the fact that they'll take multiple jobs uh, because they never know, you never know when the next one is coming. And what happens is like when you take more than one job, uh, you, your time is running thin and you have to be really organized. And anytime you spend, oh, I'm going to watch this or that, let's, w let's watch those kitten videos because they are so cute. But then those kitten videos are meaning that you're not sleeping because now you have to catch up and, and do the, the actual work. So one thing that helped me a lot was something that uh, my friend Ash Torp told me to do is to start measuring the time I've spent on work and making a list a day prior to what I'm going to do and set up timers. So for instance, let's say um, I have two different clients that I'm working on that I need to accommodate during the day. And I also want to do, you know, I want to go running and I want to eat and I want to sleep and I want to eat breakfast and, you know, spend time with family. All those things take time. So what you do is you write down a list um, a, a, a night prior, like before you go to bed, you just write down a list with check boxes. And the first one would be eating breakfast, right? Just like a, like a, I, even though it's a straightforward thing, because it's what you're going to do anyways, is it's, it's the idea of checking that first box that makes, makes you feel like oh, I've, I've already accomplished something today, you know, even though it's silly and not really, not really giving you anything um productive out of it it's still like this um the, the, your brain functions in the way that when it's rewarded it feels much happier and wants to do more right so and then the, the second thing i would do is i would plan for something that is the hardest thing right after so because when you when you do the hardest thing uh right away um uh everything else will be easy uh, towards the day. So I would set timers. Let's say uh, from I would wake up 8.30, eat my breakfast, and then 9.30 is the latest where I should supposed to start working on my project, right? Or on, on the client work. So 9.30, uh, five minutes before my clock, uh, my alarm goes off and says, in five minutes, you motherfucker should be in front of your desk working. And so I have to drop whatever I'm doing nice. and then going to, to do the actual work. And then I time myself, let's say for next three hours, I have to work and do this, exactly this. So knowing that I only have three hours and knowing that, you know, clients, especially, uh, you know, freelance uh, clients, they don't really care if you're failing or not, if you have problems with hardware, or software, or internet, whatever, it, it doesn't really matter for them. They expect results. So knowing that and knowing I'm, I'm on time and I need to really focus uh, getting those things done, I don't know about Jama. Actually, you know what? Jama is a robot too. Jama is Jama a robot? Is a... No, Jama yeah, of is course. a I'm not guy. The we know the Jama. Here. <laughs> well, he's um, I can tell you I can tell you one thing. Jama is a robot. And I'm not gonna lie. No, he's um I call him Jama of Oz <laughs> or Jama the Grey. I think oh. that's the only way to call him, really. <laughs> oh, just sometimes it slugging again or it's just or it's on me just I yeah think it's still it's, lagging on, on on the twitch side oh it doesn't really matter no if you switch right? I think it's, it's twitch side and i think after this stream we'll just write a letter a lot of them One to second. twitch support and we'll ask what's them. going on there? <laughs> come on guys it should be saved though i can see that the last broadcast is saved so um <sighs> thanks god so <laughs> basically god, yeah. you know you guys are gonna have to watch it again in chunks <laughs> Jama the Dominator. That's <laughs> fucking awesome. I agree with that. I, I agree with that. The North, yeah, the streaming from North Pole. That could be good. You know what? I, I'm not complaining personally because I'll tell you one thing. Uh, 15 years ago, yeah, 15 years ago, in order for me to call anyone, it was not just like, oh, let me type on, on Facebook and see if that person is at his computer or a phone 
or a smartwatch and will receive yeah. the message. Hey, hey man, can, when, can I call you? Yeah, yeah, you can call me. All right, I'll call you in a couple of seconds. No, when you were supposed to call your friends uh, 15 years ago, you would call his house and... Yes! And, <laughs> and you would call his house and he's not there, then fuck you, there's no... Uh, no, no we're no, not friends kind of anymore. <laughs> There's no, nothing like, uh, you know, leave the message. No, it wasn't even there. It's just call it. And um, if he's there, he's there. If maybe his mom's going to pick up. <laughs> yeah. No, he left. <laughs> and call him again and again. Just yeah, let's, meet, then we let's meet at the bar. Let's meet at the bar at uh, 8.30. And if someone wouldn't be there at 8.30, you'd think that that person died. <laughs> the bar. Yeah, because you cannot call him or text him. Hey, are you on the way? No, you you didn't have cell phones, so you know when when Twitch is uh, you know lagging a little bit, it's just like yeah, but you can still watch it everywhere around the world, you know, and have a conversation <laughs> with people across the globe. It's just and like a stand up from Lucy King. So I guess I guess it's a small price to pay that sometimes it's just gonna lag and you're just be, gonna be inconvenienced <laughs> to watch it again afterwards. I guess. <laughs> So I think that, uh, Alex, did you fix it? Because guys saying like, hey, it works now and everything is yeah, fine. Perfect. Yay! Perfect. Oh, God. Magic thank, trick, thank magic thank trick God. worked out. <laughs> yeah, magic tricks. Thank God of C. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that Craig Balance is cast like should... spell and the <laughs> which is working. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm trying to just uh, to organize all the questions that were yeah, sent sure. to you. Any questions? I'm yes, ready. And I, I think the next one, Alex will ask it. Oh, I need a second. A second? Yeah. Okay. Just a second. Well, by the way, do you love animals? Like, uh, there is a question about cats and dogs. Would you prefer? I have a dog, so I would, I would lean towards dogs because they are smarter. Cats are stupid as fuck. <laughs> they're cute, but they're oh, stupid. And they, they don't care. They don't care if you're. Uh, they Aww. don't care who you are. They don't, they don't get attached. Can, they want to. They want to know you can feed them. If you feed them, they'll they'll like you. If you're if you're a totally you know different human being that they never saw, but you're gonna bring food, dude. They're gonna like you no matter what. You know but, I. <laughs> I, you know, I create the game road with the funny sounds from artists and the cats like stupid on fuck. Uh, I just, I just, I just in game road. Now there's, but they'll, you know, cats are probably much more wild, wild than dogs. You know, I mean, dogs are, dogs generally get more, uh, more attached to humans. Uh, you know, that's yeah. their evolution, pretty much. You know. They, uh, they, their evolution is to serve. Uh, that's yeah. how they were bred, you know, across ages. So, okay, I see next question. Uh, hello, question is about admission in the industry in the future. How much you think? So, uh, what amount of skills need an average artist for a success work in industry? Uh, concept illustration. Uh, super many skills include free uh, photo use, matte paint, and other stuff, or just creating interesting and original art in two D will be enough. Um, so. 2D itself, like just painting in Photoshop traditionally or anything like that, it's all great. You know, I guess it's going to have its own niche. You know, you have artists that do Patreons and, and Gumroads and you have artists that are only using pencils and they have huge following. Uh, they have amazingly huge following at Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And they can monetize and sort of support themselves by creating art instead of working for the industry, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's another, that's one route to go with, you know. If if you think about supporting yourself, family, and supporting the idea of creating art and being an er entertainer, you create for community and then you monetize by creating for community, right? That's that's one of the approaches that is very fresh and very new. That's something that was not there uh, a couple of years ago, you know. Um, but the old route, which is working for a client or a studio, um, is a route that will require you to be always on top of everything. 
uh, new software, hardware developments, uh, where everything is going. I would, I would, I'll tell this. I'll, would, I'll tell you this. When you work in video games, for now, video games are. Uh, there is uh, AAA video games, uh, big studios with hundreds of people, and there's also uh, small indie games and you know mobile games and all mm -hmm. that, which have different development cycles. I have personally never worked in mobile games or indie games, so I cannot say much about it because I'll be lying because I don't know that experience at all. But what I know is uh, those games l lean towards more innovative uh, styles of work, you know? Again, it depends on the game. Mm -hmm. uh, bigger studios will generally, you know, generally, if you work in Photoshop, that should be enough for now. But it, it doesn't mean it's not changing, you know. Uh, over at Naughty Dog, for instance, uh, when I joined Naughty Dog, everyone was working in Photoshop only. Now, I, my friends who are out there still, like Aton and Nick and John and uh, Aaron, they mix it up heavily with 3D. And the reason is it's just faster. It's just a faster way of working. Because 3D, it's, you already have your composition, you already have your uh, perspective, uh, you have your lighting set up, and you don't have to figure out all those things at once. The, the base is already there in the matter of render, right? Um, in film, it's a different situation because majority of film work, especially when you work for... Um, big studios, and when you work for uh, when you work in the in the union, and and you when you work in production of films, uh, I don't think I know anyone who doesn't know 3D, who doesn't work in 3D. There's quite a lot of artists out there that work specifically only in 3D, and they get the best gigs because they work in 3D because they are faster. Mm -hmm. Uh, so be prepared that this is changing. Uh, be prepared that uh, there is uh, something uh, right around the corner, which is not only VR but AR. And like I personally, I see that this is going to be a big game changer, but I don't know yet how it's going to change the the structures of video mm -hmm. games and films. Well, now you know that there are films that are being created specifically for VR. You know, that's something I was thinking, but like, I was like, I'm pretty sure there are people thinking about creating VR films. And I was thinking that a year ago and that there are much smarter people that were thinking about it a couple of years ago and made it and started to, to happen, you know? So, um, so that's, that's coming. That's coming and, it's, and it, it can be uh, really disruptive, much like Photoshop and tablets were disruptive to the whole idea of drawing with pencils and u using paint back in the days, you know? Because all of a sudden, everyone who was using Photoshop was getting jobs and people who were using uh, pencils weren't. So that's so, coming, but I don't know when. Uh, so, so I don't want to... Yeah, so you think it's so hard to be up to date uh, in the industry to be like, in top artists and take all. <laughs> uh, well, I, what I would say is you need foundation just for be to be able to create art that makes sense, right? With, without foundation, it's just gonna look what the hell. Like it's not gonna work that well. Once you have the foundation, uh, then it's much easier to to work from there because anything else that you touch, whether it's uh, tool A or tool B, is going to be only a tool that you use to create your work. Whether it's a 3D program, VR, Photoshop, Sketchbook Pro, pencils and scanning, photos, it doesn't really matter at that point. If you know how to merge those tools together, you know how lighting and perspective works, you know rules of composition, you know how colors uh, react to lighting and everything like that, then you're able to create environments or characters or anything that will look great no matter what tools you're going to use, right? It used to be, a, uh, 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 it used to be that you would draw characters and draw muscles and, 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 and costumes and everything, right? Now you can just take photo of a person and then dress it in the, in the right costume, right? And the effect, if you know how to do it right, is going to be the same. If you don't know how to do it right, if you don't have a foundation that, that allows you to make a smart artistic choices, 
it's just gonna look shitty. It's just gonna look at photo collage that doesn't make any sense because the textures have different lighting. They don't really fit. The design behind your idea is really bad because you haven't taken into consideration the, the pattern of movement of that person and how this armor or this and that is going to affect them. You know, and so... I guess like one, yeah. Once you have a foundation, uh, it opens up possibilities, and then how, how, and where you go from there it doesn't really matter anymore. It, it matters that you stay on top of what's there. You stay on top of the idea that the, the, the industry is moving. It's much like um, you have artists, uh, like you have a roto artist, uh, so like doing rotoscoping and visual effects. The visual effects is being probably the, the industry that is affected the most for the technological changes um, or being a, a UV artist, right? Those jobs are mm -hmm. fading away because you have tools that will do it for you automatically. So you have to be prepared that there might be something else out there that will automate the process that you're doing. And if you're not prepared, mm -hmm. then you'll be, you know, you'll be in trouble. So always stay on top of what's going on and, you know, and, and, you know, work and spend as much time as as you can to to work towards the excellence. Because if you do that, it doesn't matter if there's a new tool. Learning tools, is, it doesn't really take time anymore. Most of the tools are so easy to learn. It takes you a week to master a tool, to know how to use it, and then another month or two to be super, you know, well-versed with it. So. Okay. We have a next question. Is your experience in... A in photo photo use, so people are interested. What do you think about it? It's uh, cheating or not? We're uh, talking about it just now. So new technologies, new software. Can you recommend it somehow? Maybe some recommend like this. Yes, recommendations about yep. photo using photos because uh, people are really interested in your works in photos right. and. Yeah. So, again, photos are just tools, you know? Um, mm -hmm. If I'm supposed to paint a grass, I will take a photo, because why would I spend time rendering grass blades? I can, if I have days and days, I will do it, you know, just for, for as for practice maybe, but I don't need to practice how to paint grass. I, I don't want to be a master renderer of, of beautiful things as grass, right? I want to design things instead. Um, but I guess, again, going back to what we, what we just uh, were talking about, the foundation. If you know foundation, if you know how perspective works and how to construct with perspective, right? And 3D, you know, using 3D will actually make it easier for you too, you know? If you know how lighting works, uh, you, you understand that, you know, the light color changes depending on the angle like with the sun when uh, the angle of the sun right so we, the the later it is the more orange it's going to be and how shadows are working and how ambient light is working and how global illumination is working all those things and how material properties are working when, when you understand the IOR which is the index of reflectance uh, you understand the Fresnel effect you understand that every material out there has a reflectivity uh, settings, right? Every single material out there re is reflective, no matter what it is. It's just one will be super reflective, the other one will be so barely reflective that you will not see much of it at all if you don't pay too much attention. A great example would be mirror and jeans, right? Jeans will reflect light, obviously. Um, but it's just going to be very scattered and a very low index or a very low reflection. It's just going to allow you to get that shading, you know, like when you look at the character and he's wearing jeans and there's a light on the side, the shading that you get from the light is actually reflection, you know? So, um, once you understand those things, which is the foundation, um, mm -hmm. then... Using photography becomes really easy because you learn to choose the right photos in the first place. You're not choosing and mixing two photos that are from different lighting, right? Different lighting, different camera lenses. Like, all those things matter. Um, but a lot of people don't pay attention because it's just like, oh, it's going to be a photo, I'm going to use it here, and boom, it's done. No, it's, it's not that easy. Um, I actually... 
Um, when I was uh, when I was teaching uh, at Learn Squared, we we did the first course, the futuristic character design, and Ash was my apprentice, and uh, he was doing I believe it was the second lesson where I'm, I'm teaching how to use uh, photos for character design, and he said, "Dude, people don't like I thought it's like going to be the easiest lesson from all of them. That was the hardest shit to do." Because after he was like slapped thing together, he was like, oh man, it, it doesn't look any good. <laughs> um, what am I doing wrong? And, and then he realized, okay, it really matters where the lighting is coming from. It really matters what is the reflection, uh, what is the material properties, how material properties are uh, you know, incorporated in the whole image. Mm -hmm. How those photos are blended together. You know, all those things are uh, small things if you think about it, but they're huge when combined together. All all of them basically can make or break the immersion of realistic image versus a photo collage done by a you know uh, a high school graduate. You know, so it's it's. Yeah, it's just very small things, but it just it, once you have the foundation and you understand how art works in general, how perspective, color, and everything works, it becomes a much easier job, you know. So, yeah, and well, I think it will be the last question about uh, how to say it, well, the development of the industry and the new mm -hmm. softwares. Um, what positive and negative moments uh, can you notice for now in the industry? So we talked about like the array that artists should know a lot, not only Photoshop, for example, right? If you want to be like up to date in the future. So uh, maybe, I don't know, you can say about the future, not uh, what people should focus on. Like the new artists who just entered the industry, or maybe want to enter the industry. Uh, so, any uh, how how should I say it right? Well, positive and negative moments for for now in the industry, mm -hmm. and any changes in the industry in the nearest future. But let's let's say it this way. Right. I'm really sorry let's, because I had to translate. No, no worries. Question. I understand. <laughs> I understand you have to translate it first, so that's fine. Um, so some of those things we answered already, you know, like yeah, be prepared yeah. that the industry is changing so much that uh, you, you cannot really predict. For now, it's like you learn 3D, like as, as easy as it can be. You learn 3D because it's really important. It's, it will be really important. It saves a lot of time when you use 3D. Um, but... Uh, the, the sort of like the shitty, maybe the shittiest aspects. I don't know. I'll tell you this though, um, and it goes goes back to the history of me uh, learning how to become a CG artist and, and going through all the processes by my own without any education whatsoever. When I was working and my way up and uh, in understanding of how all those things work and how to create art and how to be a, a digital artist, I didn't have. Twitch. I didn't have YouTube. I didn't have tutorials. I didn't have Gumroads. I didn't have Learn Squared or Gnomon or CDA or Red Engine or you know Art Center. All of those things. Or else Art Center was there. But you know, if you want to be Art Center student, you better have visa uh, to to be an American student and a lot of money because it costs a lot of money. It's like above, uh, you know. Hundred fifty thousand dollars, if not more. Like maybe it's even hundred fifty thousand dollars to complete. Oh God. You know, the four yeah, years, the five years. This is a lot of money, you know. So you can take a loan, but in order to take a loan, you have to be American. So for everyone else who's not in America and you're not taking a loan and you want to learn and and how to learn, you have so many things that are free. Not even just paid stuff like Gumroad or those schools. Like you know it. Not even that. Free stuff. YouTube. Twitch. You know, those conversations that we, we have here or people that are doing awesome free channels. There's this one guy who does amazing ana anatomy stuff, uh, Proko. Oh, yes. Stan Prokopenko. I know. Can't yeah. Admit, dude. He's yeah, just like, it. it's so right. Like, if I had that when I was learning, I would learn it like I would just watch it every fucking day. 24 7 to learn anatomy because I would learn anatomy just from that, you know, because it's free. So, 
for for a perspective of learning, it's it 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 has never been a better time than now because everything is out there. Just everything. You don't even have to buy shit. If you yeah. search if you search enough, you'll find enough information True to learn for free. Now, not everyone has a talent or will to spend hours and hours and think heavily how to research, right? It's much easier to have someone to guide you through that process. And still, for that, you have so many options, you know, just gumroads or DVDs and, you know, schools that, that not, not, not necessarily art center, but the schools like, you know, the one I've opened with, with, uh, with my friends to learn Squirt or, or Nomen or Schoolism, uh, Brainstorm. Uh, there's, there's just a bunch of them, you know? And the quality of work or the quality of learning that you get from there, it's at the highest level because you're learning from the best in the industry pretty much. So once you have that, once you know and you learn from the best in the industry, then it's much easier to learn. Now, when it comes to things that I don't like about the industry, let's put it this way. Uh, there's a lot of things that are changing and changing for better. And I generally feel that it's moving in the right direction, especially with the idea that artists now can support themselves without working for anyone, uh, but just by themselves, which was not a possibility uh, just years uh, years ago. You know, a couple of years ago, you, you, it was there was rarely a possibility where you could support your own living by just doing your own stuff, right? Now you can do it. There is a bunch of artists that are really great at it and they, they don't have to work for anyone. They can just create art. People appreciate that art and support them, you know, via, via Kickstarter or Patreon or, you know, any other platform, even Gumroad, right? There's people that are like, I'm going to create a nice tutorial and if you like it, buy it. And people buy it because they want to support the artists that they like. Uh, so those possibilities are really encouraging to me because it, it, you, you don't have to be a person that has to work for someone anymore. If you, if you do it right, you don't have to work for anyone. It's not, it's not easy as anything in the world. It, it takes a lot of effort and a lot of commitment. Um, but everything takes effort and commitment. So, so that's a great change I like. Uh, the, be the bad thing is how the industry in general in general, not, not specific companies, but industry in general, how it's treating artists. Um, and it's treating artists really bad. So that's, that's the one thing that I really don't like about the industry. It's almost, yeah. it's almost like a, an expectation that you as an artist or as a concept artist, you're expendable. You, your work really doesn't matter because we can like, oh, just draw a picture. It's easy. Just do it for free. Or, you know, there, 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 there are people that have audacity to contact you and say, um, do it for free, you know, because, I mean, it's just art, right? It's just art. <laughs> it's like going to a lawyer and saying, hey, man, I have this case. Can you do it for free? Because you already know law, so it's... it's You're free. there, you see, and do it for free. Yeah. You know. <laughs> or go to the restaurant, it's like, oh, you cooked this uh, nice meal for yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like know, this, I don't yeah. like it, so I'm not going to pay for it. So it's like... Excuse what? me. I do believe <laughs> that uh, many people believe, probably believe that somewhere in the world uh, actually exists magic wand who just turned them into the amazing artists. Without this, it's so shitty, really. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Um, uh, on, the ha on, on the surface, everything looks easy. But the reality is, it's, yeah. there's a lot of effort behind everything you do. It, even the silliest shit that you see on, on the internet, if it's, it's, if it's done well, it's a lot of effort to make, make something successful. The success doesn't come from you being lucky, ever. It, there's nothing like luck. It's, it's only the effort that you put towards what you want to achieve uh, that will make you feel like you're lucky. But it's, in essence, it's you capturing opportunities that confront you. And because you know how to capture, because you work your ass off to make it happen, this is exactly uh, what's happening to you. So for a person outside there that is just eating Cheetos and watching TV, oh, the guy got lucky. No, he didn't. He worked his ass off. How, how do you know he got lucky? He worked like... He, he might be a person that worked 
you know, 20 hours a day to, to get to a point where he is. It takes time. Uh, it's just like, I don't know, there's a lot, of, a lot of artists that get bashed or a lot of artists that get like, uh, you know, it's hard, hard to say. Uh, there's this perspective of I'm trying to dress it in the right words, if you will. Um, there's this perspective of, of things that come your way and they're easy to make. There's this perspective that photo bashing itself is an easy, easy 